remember it like this. I don't remember Juneteenth being a moment of separation for us. I remember Juneteenth being a moment of unification for us, what it was intended to be from the beginning, um, which is why that statue out there that the mayor, was it, that put together with the Afro pick? The mayor. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Afro pick, that, yeah. That, that's insane. You know, when you think about what an image is supposed to represent, that is a soulless, atheistic type of image that does not represent anything at all of what Juneteenth intended to be. So when Juneteenth got started, the first thing that those slaves did was praise God and pray. And then they celebrated immediately. That was the first thing that they did. And and so I was thinking to myself, the other thing they did was they actually put on new clothes to represent a new time and a new moment and a, and a new beginning. So to sit around and sit here and whine about how you go on TV and they don't have a makeup artist for you and they don't have a hairstylist for you, stop thinking you're ugly. Take the minimum, do it yourself, move on. If it's really about the, the voice or the message that you're trying to get out, that's what it's about. I don't sit here and take an hour to do my makeup before I get on screen, Jason. You know why? Because I don't think I'm ugly. I don't have to do all of that. And when I go to be on Fox News or Newsmax or anything, when I'm on the blaze, it's the minimum. I come to your studio and I sit down with your makeup artist and they say, do you have on makeup already? You look fine. You know why? Because I'm not ugly and I don't need these makeup tips that men have put out here and women are trying to meet those standards. Stop complaining. Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, these guys were both seen as the leaders of the black community during their time. You don't think, and again, as the leaders, they didn't have an understanding and didn't promote uh, black Americans to fully embrace American citizenship and the values that lead to success in America? Frederick Douglass, absolutely. And, th and there have been a few black leaders throughout history who understood it. My point is that there's been a concerted effort by the institutions that preside over us to keep that understanding from the broad spectrum of American of black American citizens. That's the, the most the, the thing that the establishment, the globalist establishment fears the most, maybe in the entire world of politics is for a strong contingent of black people to embrace and understand their American citizenship and then be willing to fight, die, vote, and purchase according to it. Start with your second 10. Uh, mm. You've already said who number 11 is, Steph Curry. Uh, because I found it, uh, <laughs> I found it fascinating. <laughs> this is, uh -oh. And I just want to add, I, I want to add, were you high on crack cocaine when you did this second 10? Oh uh, my God! Now you're. Oh my God! <laughs> now you're calling me Pookie. Moses Malone isn't one of your top twenty players of all time. You know, okay, I love Moses, fo fo fo. But at the end of his career, it was like Barry Bonds. He was on a team every year. I, I don't think his career ended up that great. I, I'm gonna say this: I deserve fifty lashes for not including Jerry West and Carl Malone. I, I will throw myself under the bus on that. I wasn't high. I was just drowsy. I'm on Pacific time. I just came back from a trip. Give me a break. The thing is, the Browns need to do two things. Get him a massage gun. Those things are great if you're a little sore. They work your body real cheap and everything. Just got to recharge it. Also, you know how the Browns can deal with this PR mess? I was thinking about this. I was preparing for this fine show. Get Colin Kaepernick as the backup. This way, now, now they're getting social equity. Now, if you hire Colin Kaepernick, let's see if he really wants to play football. Now, some of these guys that are going to be staunchly against the Browns, they'll be the biggest Browns pom-pom waivers you could possibly ask for. So those are my two things. Massage gun, Kaepernick. Dude, I wish you had told me that earlier in the day. <laughs> I love that suggestion. I, I mean, that... that <laughs> <laughs> on the day that it's announced his suspension, yeah. if the Cleveland Browns sign Colin Kaepernick and oh. sign him to – you've already overpaid Deshaun Watson. Go ahead and give uh, Kaepernick five, seven million bucks a yeah. year to be the backup. A priest is not going to disciple everybody. It's just uh, he's uh, – and, and I don't want to gotcha. appear more negative 
Yep. Well, I actually am negative on this point you're making. Yep. I think God's better plan is that you have close relationships with other disciples of Jesus. They're speaking into your life, you're speaking into their life, and you're walking together. That kind of confession How does that start, is, is, is much better. How does that start? Again? Well, it, it starts uh, in multiple ways. And that's what I but, think but that's they not, think. That's not, no, that's not what's going it's just, on it's just not in biblical. the confession booth. It's not, it's He's not, not going to have a discipling relationship with you. No. The priest won't? No. Again, I'm, I don't, I'm not a Catholic. The priest is not going to have a dis discipling relationship. Not That's not, not how the system's set up. Could it happen, and does it happen in some places? Yeah. I, I know a priest, for example, who's very committed to uh, disciple making and that kind of stuff, but the system itself works against it. Anybody with just a layman's understanding of the culture of sports and how attached it is to sex, it, 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 and I, all the way down to the uniforms in terms of, I think there's a reason why uh, a lot of the outfits, particularly for female athletes, uh, volleyball players and other, it, it, to me, they're selling sex appeal. No mm -hmm. different than a lot of times, it's like why Michael Jordan was so popular. He had a lot of sex appeal t towards women, but sex and sports are packaged together. We're in this me too environment of, of the media using sexual impropriety to bring down men, what better place to execute that strategy than in the sports world that, again, part of the reason athletes get involved and, and is, be, oh, they get all the women, they got cheerleaders, the whole, sex and sports go together like peanut butter and jelly, and, and I just think the left has figured out how to exploit that relationship. Play that again so Christian can see it. I like this, make it make sense, open. Uh, let's play that again. Uh, Christian, uh, come around here on, on the camera side. Uh, I just, nope, come on, stand in front of the camera. I just want people, now look into the camera and say, that was the fat Jason Whitlock. Uh, what? Yeah. That was the, f can you tell the difference between that fat Jason Whitlock and the Jason Whitlock sitting before you now? Yeah. Yeah. Why'd you have to think about that, Christian? You had to think about that. You wore uh, a black jacket this morning. I thought you looked thinner. Uh, but you uh, thought I was 320 pounds. You know what that means? What you thought? How much did you think I used to weigh, Christian? Over 400. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, frankly, it's a big middle finger to everybody out there saying, you think that you can go through and intimidate the courts? We're not going to let you. And it's the most surprising, you guys, because if you follow the Supreme Court at all, Justice Roberts cares about himself and the way that he looks. He went through and, and changed, rewrote the law in Obamacare to make sure that that went through. You can't do that as a Supreme Court justice, but he did it anyway. So today, it's, it's a legacy of the court that, that Justice Roberts is caring about and making sure that you cannot come through, we will not be intimidated. And it, it, the unprecedented nature of a Supreme Court leak, he, he was not okay with that and giving that an, an even bigger divide where it's, you're not gonna have a 5-4 to go hit the streets with. 6-3 is, is, you know, it's, it's only one difference. But in the view of many, it will be completely different when history looks back on this now. I, 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 I can, when, when, when I go home tonight and turn on the TV, I'm expecting to see chaos because of the culture we've created. So many people, oh my God, you know what I mean? I can't have an abortion? We're having all this free sex and everybody's just swiping right and left. Because sex has been so abused, we're now addicted to it and we're addicted to all the things uh, that help us do it without responsibility. That's why we're gonna see potentially uh, violent chaos throughout America. And I'm, I'm just, how do we corral that? How do we, cor how, you know, again, I, the purpose of this show and why Bobby's here and they're here every Wednesday is just, if there's not some spiritual awakening, yeah and a return to some biblical values, 
today will be a pointless celebration.